Hello everybody, this is David. In this video I'm going to cover the counters that I went over in the last couple of Verilog videos. I've got the 4-bit Johnson counter here, two of the LFSRs down here, the XNOR and the XOR version, and then a 4-bit binary counter. Um, as you can see, the Johnson counter, as far as extra combinational logic besides the 4D flip-flops, you only have one NOT gate here, one uh, XNOR gate here, and one XOR gate here. And for the binary counter, you have all this extra logic. And um, with, with all this logic, you get propagation delays through your, your system, so you have to account for that. Um, this has two levels of gates going on right here. Um, so, and, and you know, of course, the Johnson counter has eight states, so we can reset it. It's already reset, but we can count through, and you can see it, the LEDs up top going through just like it did on the FPGA. Now, as far as the binary up counter, it can go all 16 states, 0 through 15, uh, counting in binary. 14, 15, back to 0. And now the uh, this XNOR, uh, if you remember, they, these have no recovery states. So for the XNOR, 1, 1, 1, 1 is a no recovery state. So I got this button hooked up here to reset it. So we always want it to start at 0, 0, 0, 0. And it'll never go to 1, 1, 1, 1. But this will count through 2 to the N minus 1 or 15 states. Back to zero. And then down here, I've got the reset button connected to set each of the registers. Because if you remember, the no recovery state for an XOR is all zeros. So we need it to be at all ones. And then when we count through, it'll never get to all zeros. It'll count through 15 different states, get back to zero, 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 zero. Now, the reason why you would want to maybe use one of these versus a regular binary counter, besides the fact that it has a lot of extra combinational logic, um, you know, you, you're saving space on your silicone, you know, so just uh, keep that in mind, just something to be aware of. Thanks for watching.